Okay, the next question's on the screen, and this one was sent to us by Gulwa. Gulwa, I'm going to try and go as fast because I want to get to Lindiwe's question as well as the one after that. So Gulwa's question says, in this diagram you have a wooden piece, a prism, piece of wood. The lengths of the right angled sides are 3x and 4x, and then 5x. So that's a right angled triangle, and the height of the prism is y. Now, they give you inf interesting information over here. They tell you that the prism has a surface area of 3,600. Now, folks, it's easy. It's not difficult. Just break the diagram down. Okay, let's see. There's a triangle here at the top, and there's a triangle at the bottom. So the area of the triangles will be half base, both of them are right angles, so half base times the height of the triangle which is 4x. And there's two of them, one at the top, one at the bottom. Okay, now let's look at the back side over here, the square side. There, not really a square side, but that quadrilateral that's there at the back. That quadrilateral has a height of y, because this block is y long. So let's put the y's where they belong. They belong there, they belong here, and here we have another 3x coming up. Okay, so for the one side at the back, so the area of the quadrilateral, let's call it quad 1, will be, that's the quadrilateral at the back, is y times 3x, length times breadth. And the area for quad 2, I'm just going to call it q2 for quad 2, which is the one that we find if we look at the diagram from this side. I'm not talking about this big one, I'm talking about the one on the side. Now that will be y times 4x, length times breadth. And this front face here, this face that looks like a little parallelogram there, the area of that face, um, let's just say front so we know what we're talking about, is equal to y times 5x. Okay, so if we add all of that together, there's two triangles, there's two, there's actually three quadrilaterals of different sizes because we do not have an isosceles triangle as a base. Okay, so let's quickly see here. The surface area then, we're doing 8.1. The surface area is 3,600. What is it made up of? It's made up of 5xy plus 3xy plus 4xy. And then plus here, the 2's cancel over there, and I have 12x squared. Okay, so hopefully we are going to get to what we want to get to here. If I now look at this, I can see immediately grade 12s that there's a common factor of y. Okay, so I'm going to group the 12x to the other side with the 3600. So 5xy's, 3xy's and 4xy's gives us 12xy's which is equal to 3,600 um, minus 12x squared. I was worried about this 12 not appearing in the answer over here. So all we need to do is divide by 12x. So y will be 3,600 minus 12x squared all over 12x. Now, surely, folks, you can see that 300 times 12 gives you the 3,600. So I divide these two over x minus 12's cancel. The 1x cancels the x at the top. Okay, so that gives me uh, an x that lies at the top. Now, all they did is they kept it on the same LCD. Okay, so that's the first part done for three marks, Gulwa. The second part of they're asking you now to determine the value of x so that the surface area of this prism is a maximum, or for which the volume, rather, is a maximum, not the surface area. 
Okay, so we need to find a new expression for volume. So let's go back and let's see. My volume always, 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 always. Make a note of this for part two. The volume of any prism, right prism like this, is the base area multiplied by the height of my prism that I'm working with. Now I've got the height here in terms of x. That's what that was for. So let me bring it in immediately. 300 x to the minus 1 minus x is the height of this figure and the base area is the area of that triangle. Now I've already worked it out here except for I worked out for two of them. So the half comes back. I have 12 divided by 2 is 6 and then 6x squared is what this multiplies with. Okay, so that is then my volume in terms of x. I can only do it in terms of one variable matrix because I can only differentiate with respect to one variable. Okay, so let's quickly finish this one. If I just clean it up a little bit, 6 times 300 is 1,800 x. The x times x to the minus 1, you add the powers, it reduces by 1. And minus 6x cubed. Okay, that's the volume. It's now ready to differentiate. So I can say, therefore, v prime x is naught. Why is it naught? Because I'm optimizing it. So I'm going into the next phase of my problem. 1,800, if I differentiate that, it's the coefficient. Minus 18x squared is naught. Now if I divide 1,800 by 18, we can all see it's going to be 100. Okay, so I get x squared, which is equal to 100, and therefore x is 10. Now usually... You would say plus or minus 10, folks, but x represents a dimension, so x has to be positive. Okay, let's see if we answered the question. They say, determine the value of x for which the volume of the prism is a maximum. Well, if x is equal to 10, this volume is indeed a maximum.